Welcome back to Auto Review and before we get to the car I would like you to please hit the subscribe button and activate the bell icon so you get all the notifications whenever a new video comes out. Secondly, thank you very much Garage Books Ali AG which is located in Goldsville which is right over there behind my back uh, who provided this car to me. If you would like to have more information on Hyundai please check the link in the description. All right, so let's get to the car. We have here the most powerful petrol engine 140 horsepower at 6,000 rpm, maximum torque of 242 newton meters at 1,500 rpm, 0 to 100 in 9.1 seconds, and a top speed of 208 kilometers an hour. There are two versions. There's one, the Echo Pack, which we have here, which is a little bit slower. It's not 210, but 208 kilometers an hour, and a little bit slower as well in acceleration, 9.1 seconds versus 8.9 seconds. However, it is there to consume less fuel. My fuel consumption on nearly 300 kilometers was 5.8 liters on average. However, with a lot of highway, uh, the ones who follow me for some time now know that my drive to work is pretty much 80% highway, a bit of B roads and a little of city traffic and uh, a total distance of 65 kilometers one way. So there I achieved 5.8 liters. So what do we have here? We have a pretty nice car, I have to say. I really was surprised. This is the first Hyundai I tested and the first Hyundai I ever drove in my life as well. Uh, and I'm positively surprised uh, over the entire package. So we have full LED lights, B LED lights. We have an eight inch navigation, touchscreen, dual zone air conditioning, few assist systems on board, depending on what you order. But as usual, I'll show you the car. First row, second row, the boot space, and then we drive. Enjoy. All right, so the i30 from inside, as usual, left to right. So we have electric mirrors, which are heated and electrically folded. We have electric windows, which open all one touch on all four places, which is great. I really like that. Then the door bins have enough space for a lot of things, including big 1.5 liter bottles, which is great. On the left side below the vent, we have then the adjustment of the light or the brightness of the display and the dashboard. The lane departure assistant on and off, as well as ESP on and off. Then steering wheel can be adjusted in reach and rake, which is great. It's nice, not too thick, not too thin. Uh, has an, a little bit soft touch to it, which is really nice and comfortable. I really like it with leather wrapping. Then on the left side, voice control, 
volume button, station up and down, as well as call on and off, or basically accept and uh, decline. On the right side to switch between different menu settings, uh, for example, the average fuel consumption, distance driven and the time. Navigation, if you have a destination selected, it will show you here as well as there. Then the lane departure assistant and driver settings, different sound, doors, service intervals. Then the cruise control and the cruise control with two kilometer per hour steps or if you keep them hold, it basically accelerates or goes down. Then the instrument cluster, left RPM with temperature, right speed with fuel gauge in the middle, the digital information screen. And here we have in the middle then the eight inch navigation touchscreen with physical buttons on the left and right for the shortcuts, which is awesome. I love that. I rather have a little bit small screen and H and it's not small. I've seen much smaller ones with physical buttons than having something that appears to be a big screen. And then actually when you turn it on, you have the bezel around it with some uh, touch sensitive buttons on the screen, which do not work properly. This one is very responsive, which is good. I really like it. It goes in between. You have shortcut buttons to go wherever you would like to go, radio, media, and so on and so on. Works perfect. And a physical rocker to uh, increase or decrease the volume. Then we have the air vents, very important hazard lights in the middle, which is great. And a little SD card slot for the navigation. By the way, navigation has in this car 10 year map updates for free, which is great. On the bottom, we have the air conditioning dual zone, left and right with some shortcut buttons again. A compartment where you can fit your phone or small items. Cigarette lighter, which I do not approve. However, you can replace this and now obviously a 12 volt power socket, which we have already on the right side as well. So you have two aux in and a USB port. This one is the six speed manual gearbox. You can have this car as well with a seven speed automatic gearbox. Heated seats in three settings for driver and passenger, park sensors on and off and start stop on and off. Two cup holders with an ashtray, obviously. Again, you don't need that. Manual handbrake, armrest with a big compartment that you can fit to small items, auto dim mirror, then big mirrors in the sunshades for driver and passenger and little gimmick you can turn on and off the light separately. Then compartment for glasses if you're someone like me you need glasses and you have to change them and a glass box and believe it or not oh my god this is all the stuff that comes with this car. Okay so instruction manual okay actually this is the one this is in Italian and I guess the other one will be in French but still look at this book unbelievable. If you take them and leave them at home, you have quite a big glove box. Uh, obviously, the seat can be adjusted in height as well, and we have a lumbar support. That's it for the first row. Let's check the second one. Right, so the i30 from the back. Doors open, uh, let's say like 75 degrees, which is good. Easy to get in and out. When we close it, we have the electric windows, obviously to open a door, and a bin that fits, again, smaller bottles and some stuff. Uh, which is actually separated, so you have one part for the bottle and then something else in front and in the back, which is good. We have pockets on the back seats, uh, on both seats, handle, a little hook. I do like the seats and what I like as well is the angle of the seats, which is not too much uh, backwards and too much to the front, uh, which is good. Headrest could be a little bit higher, however, they are fine. On the outer seats, the one in the middle only goes up to this height. So here, I guess someone up to 150 max. We can open the armrest, which is nice and nice height as well, which is good. Two cup holders, which are rubberized. And what I like as well, we can open it and uh, get to the boot. If you, for example, have skis or something, which is nice. Three three-point seat belts, isofix on the outer seats, uh, no USB, no vents whatsoever one reading light for the middle and that's pretty much it. So let's check the boot. All right, so before we get to the boot and the back side of the car, uh, one more information, echo pack and not having the echo pack, one difference that you will notice will be the rims. So here we have 16 inch with 205 tires and on the non echo pack we have 17 inch with 225 tires. Okay, so the design of the car, we have kind of a very fat 
shock fin antenna on top here. Then the roof spoiler that extends from the roof is actually in black, not in silver. I'm not so sure about that. It fits with this part, however. I think I would have liked it if it would be silver. Then we have red and white lights, fog lights in the back side on the bottom, chrome applications here, Hyundai on the left and a huge i30 on the right. I think they could have done it a little bit smaller. Then the logo in the middle, parking sensors on the bottom and then when we open the boot you'll find the reverse camera below the logo. Actually the problem is it gets dirty so you'll see the picture I'm just going to show you now how it looks. So once we open it the cover will slide up uh, with the boot then we have a hook on the left and hook on the right 12 volt power socket. Boot space is okay. Uh, we have a two floors. Uh, you can obviously lift this one and have some uh, small items that uh, you don't want to have flying around. You just put them there. Some deeper pockets on the right and left. Uh, however, because of the design of the car or how it is designed, we have quite a high loading height. Uh, you can see here, I guess it's around a meter or so. And then you have to put it down so it's not flat. Uh, however, if they would have made it flat, it would be pretty small. Um, that's why they kept it this way. So that's it. Let's close it and let's hit the road. Okay, so let's drive it and I'll tell you what I think about the i30. So, first of all, I think the fuel consumption figures are good. Uh, I had on average 5.8 liters, as I mentioned. Yes, with a lot of highway, but you are able to at least achieve it. And a car with 140 horsepower is actually not bad. Um, lowest I had was 5.7 and I was driving actually a bit faster than usual. Usually I drive anything between 90 to 110 when I test uh, on long distance. However, this time I was driving like 125 as per the speedo, which will be 120 in real life. So that's why the fuel consumption is a bit higher. I guess if you drive around 100 or between 80 and 100, if you don't use much highway or higher speeds, you'll be able to achieve around 5.5 liter. And uh, this 5.8 was really without much effort. So it was easy to achieve it. One thing that I have to mention when I was driving this car is that even though it has 140 horsepower, it doesn't really feel like it until you pretty much press the accelerator towards the last third of it, of the way. Because in the beginning it pretty much tries to keep the RPM low and it doesn't accelerate as fast as you would like it to do if you don't shift. So it needs revs. Pretty much below 2100, 2200 RPM there isn't much happening if we don't accelerate full throttle. Which in my opinion is made so you basically save fuel. It has a shift indicator so now it tells me already around 2000 to shift. So you see, just before it actually goes, it will tell you to shift. So it's all about economy. I'm not quite sure if the non echo pack version would have the same feeling or if just the echo pack makes it like this because the transmission is set up a little bit different from the normal one according to the you know, information that I found. Now, what I like is we have six gears and at 100 kilometers an hour, which you're gonna try now, we have just around 2,100 RPM on the clock. So it is all about saving fuel. And you hear it's not very loud, it's very comfortable to drive, you have no problems talking to your uh, passengers uh, or your kids in the back. Now we have a loud truck in front of us, that's a different thing. But cruise control on and then we can drive. Now we're 80 at 1,800 RPM and let's go to 100 and see I accelerate now full throttle. It's not getting really noisy. Now we have 100, just around 2,000 RPM. So we set the speed and again mentioned I had 5.8 liters fuel consumption, which is really, really good. The screen is nice. Everything is in reachable distance, which is good. Uh, we have an auto function for the zoom, so you can turn it on and off, obviously, but um, if you have it on, it basically shows you, you, you saw it just now, it zooms in according to the speed. So the faster you drive, the further it goes out, and the lower you get, or if you get to junctions, it actually zooms in. 
the noise, the beeping you just had was the lane departure warning, which you will hear and obviously you'll see as well. Uh, and the car has as well a lane departure which is active. So basically, once I leave it, it will indicate it's green, it will steer through the corners. Oh, there's been an accident and we cannot turn on the right side here. Shame. No, I didn't set the cruise control. Now I set it and the car will steer itself. It will start beeping and alerting me around 10 seconds afterwards. So let's just see. See, now I'm on the lane. Now it should tell me to put my hands on. If you don't put your hands on, it will turn it off and it will go over the lane. So be careful. Uh, reverse camera, I don't like the quality of the reverse camera. I wish it would be a little bit higher resolution. Uh, however, it's good to have it. We have parking sensor in the back. However, we don't have one in the front. Um, or we don't have them in the front. Which, again, okay, but it's nice to have. Then everything is clear. This is nice. We have soft touch on top. And then the material on the bottom, it looks exactly the same. Not quite sure how they made it, but actually here it's hard. And here it's hard as well. Here it's hard. Here it's soft, soft, and obviously soft. So where you put your arm, and here obviously as well, this is leather or leatherette. That works well. And uh, space-wise, we have really sufficient space in the back. We have good space in the front. <coughs> Sorry. I have more than enough space here. As well, it's a nice airy feeling. And it's nothing like that um, we don't have space here in this car. I like the look of it in the back, not as much as in the front. And obviously with bigger rims, it looks nicer and sportier. However, for everyone who would be interested to have an i30, which is more sporty, there will be an N version coming out next year, 2018. By the way, we're just passing by Garage Borgzini. Hello, this is where we have the car from. So if you would interest, would be interested, just head over to them. Again, back to the sporty version. If 140 horsepower is not enough for you, there will be the i30 N which is coming out in 2018, and that is supposed to have 275 horsepower. Not much to tell you, actually. I will turn around here, because the car is actually unspectacular, which means it's a great car, but you don't really see it, you don't really appreciate it as much, because it does everything just fine, just Everything is fine, everything is good, it works. And it's a perfect commuter. It's a perfect family car as well. You have really enough space there. Uh, we have heated seats, which is great. Now, my recommendation would be, obviously, I'm not so sure about the one liter three cylinder engine, even though it has 120 horsepower. I would have to see, uh, or you would have to see it if you're interested in this car. However, what I really love is we have a B LED lights, which is great, and you can't even get horrible halogen light. So that is great. And my recommendation is get the 140 horsepower petrol powered one. Go for a diesel if you're interested in diesel. Uh, I had some comments now, how can I recommend diesels nowadays? Because in Germany there's um, diesel gate and diesel scandal and uh, soon Germany will forbid diesels in the cities which yeah they're talking about it but come on I'm German and I know for sure German Germany is the country of bureaucracy and it will take at least five to ten years before they're gonna even think about banning the cars or they're gonna implement it so please take it easy guys but if you're concerned about it get the petrol engine 140 horsepower is sufficient good fuel consumption good space and one very important aspect of uh, Hyundai in Switzerland, we have a five-year warranty with no mileage restriction. So you can drive five years and you can put in one million kilometers on this car and you still don't have warranty, which is great, amazing. So uh, you don't have to worry about reaching um, a mileage if you're a driver like me, where you drive around 30,000 kilometers a year. Um, depends on the models, obviously. Great car for people who drive a lot. Um, sign recognition we have as well. I mean, what else do you need? If you would like to have adaptive cruise control with a radar in the front and some more 
uh, gimmicks, leather and, well, a few more things. Uh, you can go for the Launch Plus, which is the highest spec, and you're gonna have a fully equipped car, even with LED lights in the back. So, I think it's great. Oh, price. Price for this one, 28,350 Swiss francs. As it is, these are the retail prices. However, Hyundai has obviously some promotion going on. I think at the moment there's something around 2,000 to, don't get me wrong, something like, I think between 2,000 and 3,000, 350 or 4,450. Please check the website for more information. So that's it. Again, thank you very much, Garage Burgzeli in Goldsville, who provided this car to me. And uh, subscribe, like, and share. Please comment below, ask if you have any questions, and I'll try my best to answer them as fast as possible with the information that you are seeking. So thanks a lot. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.